The effect of high explosive shells on tank armor is definitely very dramatic. A successful penetration results in a big gaping hole with jagged fragments everywhere, and while the vehicle is almost certainly going to be rendered combat ineffective at the very least, and most likely irreparable. But how effective were large high explosive shells really, and were they better than an armor piercing shell of the same caliber? Keep watching and find out. As I mentioned in a previous video, the Red Army began to look into the use of field artillery against tanks before the Great Patriotic War. The results were somewhat encouraging. Small caliber ammunition, so 107 and 76 millimeters, could defeat 30 to 40 millimeters of enemy tank armor. This was good enough to defeat any light tank at the time, and uh, almost all German medium tanks as well. Uh, larger caliber guns were used in that test, but anything 122 millimeters or larger wouldn't be firing high explosives. It would be firing a concrete penetrating shell or semi-armor piercing. This would be a shell designed to defeat heavy concrete fortifications. Uh, it would have less explosive filler than uh, a true high explosive shell, but still more filler than an armor piercing shell, uh, even if it was fused. In these trials, the penetration of armor by concrete piercing shells was actually pretty decent. For example, the 152mm gun howitzer could penetrate up to 120mm when firing concrete piercing shells. This was pretty good. Uh, in terms of ratio to caliber, uh, caliber to penetration, it could still penetrate more armor than high explosive shells could for the uh, smaller guns but it was still considered to be inadequate, and so the Red Army ordered proper armor-piercing shells to be developed for any gun uh, 152 millimeters in caliber and larger. So as it often happens, this work was never completed. When the SU-152 rolled out of the factory in 1943, they were only loaded with high-explosive shells. This was generally fine, uh, since the mission of the SU-152 was not a tank destroyer, it was a self-propelled gun, um, and so it wasn't primarily shooting at tanks, it was shooting high explosive ammunition. So it was perfectly fine to put these tanks in the field. Um, and even though work began urgently on high, um, proper armor piercing ammunition for these self propelled guns, it was not ready in time for the Battle of Kursk. At the Battle of Kursk, it suddenly turned out that the Germans were fielding new armored vehicles with quite thick armor, and the Su-152 just happened to be one of the few tanks or self-propelled guns used by Red Army that could actually take them head on. And it turned out to be quite effective. Uh, it turns out that if you get smacked with a 40 kilogram high explosive shell, even if it's not a real armor piercing shell, you're going to have a really bad time. There was one particular vehicle called Seraboy, uh, which means beast killer, which performed so well that the name Seraboy was uh, spread out to refer to any SU-152. Naturally, the Red Army was curious to see if this success could be reproduced in controlled conditions, and so when shooting up the vehicles that were recovered from the Battle of Kursk, the SU-152 fired a high explosive shell. One of the targets was the turret of a Panther tank, and I think the description of this shot is worth a full translation. Photo number 38, Panther Tank Turret. Impact from a high explosive shell from a 152mm gun howitzer. Breach, 350 by 370 millimeters. The explosion of the shell created a breach in the turret platform and the turret on the opposite side. Range, 1200 meters. Angle between the axis of fire and the hull, 60 degrees. So the force of the explosion was powerful enough to not only break open the Panther's turret from one side, but the shockwave actually traveled through the entire hull of the tank and broke open the other side. This presumably was judged to be a powerful enough method of attack, as no other shots were made with the 152mm high explosive shell. Trials of another vehicle captured the Battle of Kursk allow us to compare the effectiveness of concrete piercing shells and high explosive shells when targeting the same plate of armor. In this case, the site of a Ferdinand. The G530 concrete piercing shell, when fired from a range of 1,000 meters, made a huge gaping hole in the side, 230 by 230 millimeters, and, well, that would have destroyed the tank completely. On the other hand, the high explosive shell only made a deep dent with a 170 millimeter long crack running through the armor. While this kind of damage could have compromised the Ferdinand's structural integrity or made it more vulnerable to follow-up shots, it might also not have destroyed the tank outright on the first impact. So as you can see in this situation, even the concrete piercing shell was superior even though it was not an armor piercing shell.
Likewise, an ISU-152 was tested against a King Tiger that was captured in 1944. The damage from a high explosive shell was still pretty significant. The shell impacted in the vicinity of the machine gun ball. It broke the uh, bracket holding the machine gun ball in place, caused the crack through the armor, um, and also broke the connection between the front armor and the side. This also was a quite a devastating hit to the King Tiger, uh, probably would have caused the crew to abandon the tank, but would not have rendered it reparable uh, and, well, did not outright destroy it. In the same test, 152mm armor piercing shells uh, didn't penetrate the upper front plate, but they did cause significant cracking and spalling when they hit, um, and one shell did penetrate the lower front plate, so the jury's out uh, on whether or not Given the choice, you would engage a King Tiger with high explosive or with armor piercing shells. The other big gun in the Red Army worth mentioning was the 122mm A19 gun. When it was adapted into the IS-2 under the name D25T, it already had an armor piercing shell ready for it, uh, but that didn't mean that the use of high explosives was off the table. The IS-2, of course, was not a tank destroyer. Uh, the majority of the ammunition it carried on board was high explosive, and so it was interesting to know whether or not this ammunition could destroy enemy tanks. In the trials against the same King Tiger I mentioned before, a 122mm high explosive shell was actually the first shell to be fired against this tank's armor. The effect was, well, also pretty good. Uh, flames that burst through the machine gun ball set fire to the inside of the tank. There was cracking, there was spalling. Uh, it is very likely that the crew would have abandoned the tank if it came under this kind of attack. Of course, the front of the King Tiger, much like with the 152mm, could be penetrated by the 122mm armor piercing shells, but only as a result of repeated attack. On the other hand, the front of the turret could be destroyed by a fair penetration. Uh, so again, jury's out what kind of ammunition you would use against a King Tiger, a high explosive or armor piercing. High explosive ammunition from the 122mm gun was not used in trials against the Panther tank, but it was used on the battlefield. Uh, in the mission accompanying the first IS-2 tanks to observe their use in combat, the reports describe a Panther tank being shot at and hit with a high explosive shell at a range of 1200 meters, which penetrated the Panther's armor and set it ablaze, ultimately destroying it. So, uh, as you can see, the 122mm high explosive shell, just like the 152mm, is a very effective weapon against Panther tanks. Even though very effective armor piercing and even heat ammunition became available for 122 and 152mm guns after the war, research into the effect of high explosive ammunition on armor still continued, and the findings were actually quite interesting. This research showed that uh, unlike a game like World of Tanks, which only models damage based on the contents of the high explosive shell uh, or the shell's caliber, the velocity actually had quite a lot to do with how much damage would be dealt to the tank on impact. The more energy transferred into, into the tank's armor, uh, the greater damage, the more cracking, spalling, and just general destruction you get. And the successful transfer of energy really depended on the velocity. Uh, this was quite level from 250 to about 500 meters per second, but after that it began to rise drastically. And so it was judged that a 152mm shell that uh, was flying faster than about 600 meters per second was actually quite a lethal weapon. At a muzzle velocity of 250 meters per second, a 152mm shell actually dealt less damage to the armor than a 100 or 130mm shell flying at a high velocity. However, at about 650 meters per second, the 152mm shell began to do more damage than even high velocity 100 and 130mm high explosive shells. High velocity 125mm HE actually came close to 120mm British Hesh rounds, uh, and 152mm HE, if uh, the OF 29 round was used, exceeded it in armor piercing performance. Of course, spalling isn't the only way to damage a tank's internals if you're using a high explosive shell. Trials carried out after the war showed that a 122mm shell that impacts very thick armor, even up to 240 millimeters thick, is still going to cause enough of a shockwave inside the tank to deal significant blast injuries to the crew. 
Unfortunately, in these trials, a 152mm shell was not used, uh, but given the kind of ammunition the USSR had available, uh, I don't doubt that a larger high-explosive shell that's also fired at a fair velocity is still going to do significant damage to the tank's crew and its components. As you can see, 122 and 152 high explosive ammunition was a very powerful weapon against even the heaviest of German armor. Even if the armor wasn't penetrated completely, impact from such a big shell would cause cracking, spalling, it could destroy components inside the tank and kill the crew with either blast injuries or with fragments. Even after high explosive uh, anti tank and armor piercing ammunition were invented, the high explosive shell remained a viable alternative against even the heaviest of armor.